you got big dreams and bad jeans, you are in the right place. Bromley shirts are available at barbellapparel.com. Link is in the description. What's the hardest workout that you've ever gone through? Everybody can think of one workout that left them shirtless on the ground, covered in vomit, that made them second guess their goals and want to give up coming to the gym altogether. Now, if you're anything like me, these training sessions that are burned into your brain all have one thing in common, lower body muscles and just a shit ton of fatigue. I can remember the first time doing group strongman training in Costa Mesa where the death medley was the fee you had to pay your first day with the group. I can think of the drop sets of hack squats that were superset with leg extensions that me and my teenage friends thought were just a fantastic idea. And I can remember the hundred yards of lunges and bear crawls that we had to do during football, just like I can remember the CrossFit workouts I jumped into thinking that my years of strongman would have prepared me for it. And it didn't. All of these workouts left me a shade of purple and blue as opposed to my normal red and white and just had me on the ground with knives in my lungs thinking of how many of my personal possessions I would give up just to avoid doing another round. But of all of these workouts, none was more insidious or productive than super squats. Now the book super squats has been around for a while. It was written by Randall Strawson of Iron Mind. And I strongly recommend you check out that site if you haven't. Uh, the issues of Milo are absolutely great. The strength journal that covered all different aspects of strength sports, their books, their training equipment are all kind of connected to kind of the older, like under the rug aspects of strength culture that I think are very valuable. But the book itself advocates for an older method of growth and it kind of takes bang for the buck as a tagline and it skins it, blends it and filters it to give you this purified potent extract of muscle growth. Super squats takes a single exercise known for causing an immense amount of growth over your entire body, with just simple practice, which is the squat. And then it takes just one training variable that's known for increasing growth, specifically in this exercise, and it makes the whole program revolve around it, which is fatigue. And then you sprinkle the rest of the workout with similarly effective barbell movements, and you just make sure to progress everything by a few pounds a couple of times per week for as long as you can tolerate it. And the result is Super Squat, a program that is simple enough to be explained on a three by six index card while being so good at what it does that they felt confident putting how to gain 30 pounds of muscle in six weeks on the cover. Now that's going to trigger a lot of you into pausing and commenting on how ridiculous that is, but put a pin in it because I'll get to that later. First, I want to explain exactly what it is that we're talking about. In talking about this training program in the past, I've gotten responses to the effect of what's so bad about 20 reppers? I do high reps in training all the time. This isn't just a single high rep set of squats. It's high reps with high weight. The prescribed starting weight for super squats is around a 10 rep max, 75% ish to most of you, depending on your conditioning and experience. And that number is assuming you complete the 10 reps in a reasonable amount of time and don't hang out at the top sucking wind. If you take this true quick 10 rep max and say gun to my head, how many can I do without racking it? You're going to notice there's a unique feature of squats that doesn't exist in other exercises. You can hold the weight at the top long enough to recover for another rep. And it seems like you can do this for as long as you want. This doesn't exist in pressing. The rest you get from holding the weight at arm's length quickly craps out as the small muscles of the triceps fatigue. For racking up reps, it seems like it's a wash between moving quickly or taking breaks at the top. And for deadlifts, it certainly doesn't work. I recommend anybody try to hold the weight for a few seconds in between each rep to get some rest. And then notice how recovered your glutes, lats, and traps are not. And resting at the bottom is a no-go either because the hardest part of the deadlift is getting it started. So as you get a little bit of fatigue, if you rest and then go back to it, you just can't break it off the ground. Whereas in a squat, you can rest at the top and you stretch reflex out of the bottom. The squat is unique here. And it turns out that this is a powerful developmental tool. So the program calls for this one set with a few big, strong breaths in between starting at three and moving up to as many as 10 or more in later reps. Now a bit of quick math shows that this is a lot of time with the bar on your back. If you did it in two minutes, you probably went too quick and probably could have handled more weight by taking longer breaks in between. Super squats describes the process. After the 10th rep, your body is done and your mind becomes the vehicle that either moves or stalls in the face of the challenge to reach the 20th rep. Now the game changes again because not only do the breathing and the pep talks become still more important, but each squat becomes an event performed in a dilated time capsule where you, as you, fade, becoming more of an observer than an actor. If your mind falters, you are dead meat now, so you either get tough and grow or cave in and stay small. Guys, if I can help fund this channel and help you solve a problem, I call that a win-win, so please allow me one moment to preach the good word of Boost Camp. 
I tend to get a little complex when I'm writing workout plans. Tracking progress for these programs is hugely important, but options were never great. I would write these long, complex progressions by hand into a notebook, or I would carry a binder filled with spreadsheets I printed off of LiftVault. That's why I'm here to introduce you to BoostCamp. Boostcamp is the easy way to track training progress directly from your phone. Their library of programs features countless dozens of powerlifting and hypertrophy specific programs from your favorite creators, including Jeffrey Verity Schofield, Johnny Candido, Eric Helms, Greg Knuckles, Alberto Nunez, and of course, yours truly. Boostcamp also has exclusive programs that you just won't find anywhere else. Select the one best suited to your needs and watch the sets, reps, weights, and exercises populate automatically. Don't guess at that one weight you lifted that one time for how many reps again? Have your log of training with you at all times for easy reference in the convenience of your phone. Not only does Boostcamp have a stellar product, but their support is the only reason this channel exists. So thank you, the viewer, and thank you to Boostcamp. Check it out today. The link is in the description. Now it begs the question of why this would be effective in the first place, or at least more effective than a standard set and rep dynamic for squats. There's always been a rough pattern of harder work correlating with more growth, but the elasticity of the squat, the sense that you can always do a bit more, gives you another dial to turn in your workout where other exercises just stop as soon as the weakest link fatigues. If you put your dog on a leash and he runs full bore, only one thing can happen when the slack gets taken out. But if there's a rubber band instead of a rigid rope, he's going to feel the limit coming, brace for it, and instead of getting taken off at the neck, uneager to test that limit again, he might even find himself enjoying trying to reach it again and again, moving an inch further each time. Now the mechanism for super squat effectiveness is probably related to density. That is how much work you're doing per unit of time. Density training has had its day in the sun with some trying to capitalize on it to push a new way of training. Escalating density training was a method of progressing how much work you could fit into a designated time slot like 10 or 15 minutes rather than just trying to increase overall work and it never really caught on. I don't really know that this strategy is giving the edge to the next Mr. Olympia, but if you are in a time crunch and looking for an interesting way to make your workouts a little more competitive, there is certainly value in structuring your progression this way. Now, I've long said that density is one of the deadliest features of strongman training that contributes to the immense growth, just as much as the types of lifts being done or the absolute weight being moved. Any competitor is going to have to do sandbag carries, stone loads, odd object medleys, and yes, squats, deadlifts, and presses for time, meaning that almost every contest prep has you setting the clock for 60 or 90 seconds and then pacing yourself to pack as many reps as possible into that period. This essentially is just rest pause training, but with big ass movements and a whole ton of weight. Now, if effective reps has any bearing in reality, then there's some explanation as to why this works. More of the total reps that you do in a workout are going to meet the requirement for growth for them to count as effective reps. The spitting vein popping effort that aims for maximal motor recruitment along with the slow strained bar speed that keeps mechanical tension high. Effective reps need a lot of effort with the weight involuntarily slowing down and you get those two conditions met. So with super squats, it's essentially myo reps with gamma radiation. Now with the effort, with something as big as a squat, you have a big movement that you're hammering with all of that effort for a long time. It's a recipe for conditioning. Multiple energy systems are being taxed. So the muscle is being stimulated for growth, yes, but so are all of your endurance faculties. And when those improve, you do have the ability to recover faster and last longer. And that makes adding the five pounds to your 20 repper each week or each session that much easier. In fact, the use of conditioning and perpetuating growth once you've stalled is probably one of the most underused strategies that specialists ignore. Now, it seems counterintuitive. You would think that more specialization would be required as you get more advanced, but it seems that broadening out your base by focusing on more endurance stuff and making sure the mass you do grow is actually supported by all of these other kind of secondary features, that seems to be helpful with perpetuating growth long-term. Now take everything we've discussed and apply it to the squat itself, which is a biomechanically friendly movement that has the rare quality of stimulating many muscles for growth with a lot of weight while still being easy to recover from. And the result is a nasty growth bomb. 
Now, this is exactly how I trained for a lever squat event at the LA Fit Expo, where I competed in the heavyweights against Larry Wheels. Now, this story is definitely, uh, you already told this one, Grandpa, but it's relevant, so here it is again. The lever squat event was billed at 510 pounds in hand, and it was one where I thought I had an edge. Wheels was new to strongman, but I figured where he had everybody in strength, he could be edged out with movement efficiency, conditioning, and strategy. I knew not to go into this event swinging for the fences, clipping off the reps as fast as I could, but pacing each rep with one or two deliberate breaths in between. So my training was entirely focused on pacing my reps and filling up the clock. So I was focused on density over the minute rather than doing a strict isolated set. My training culminated with 455 for 15 reps paced evenly right at the one minute mark, confident that I could have done another 10 if I had another minute to do so. So come game day, I went early and I clocked 17 reps in the minute with the purported 510 using a narrow stance with my feet right under the bar and light knee wraps on. Now Larry went after me and having just watched his video of 500 for 25 reps, I thought I along with everyone else was gonna get smoked. He creeped up to then stalled right at 17 reps. Now I had my advantages. Larry was bare kneed and brand new to the lever squat. His feet were awkwardly out in front of him. But in this particular show, in this particular setup, I managed to hang with a 900 pound raw squatter and former all time world record power lifter by implementing specific strategy. The deliberate approach to breathing squats for a full contest prep put me in the best squatting shape I had ever been in and had my squat max arguably higher than it ever had been before. And that's all without going above 85%. This is what happens when a supreme developmental stimulus makes your base so much wider that it overpowers the marginal gains you would have made if you were to just do further specialization. Now the super squat program as a whole features the squat and other proven compound movements with a few idiosyncrasies. Pressing is done for three sets, arms is done for two, stiff leg deadlifts and abs are done for one, probably because the single set of squats counts like three or four lower body sets on its own. And the truth is, even if you did the squats in a normal set and rep scheme and committed to the five pound jumps each workout, this would grow you exceptionally well. I think this program works fantastically well as a beginner program, and I think it can very easily be adjusted to just about anybody by massaging your rate of progression. The big problem you run into with simpler programs that follow a set progression like this is recovery as you get stronger. It's easy to just alternate with another rep range, and there's an example of this in the book, uh, or you can push the workouts farther apart, you can break the split up so you don't revisit the same exercises so often. These types of programs that are focused on compound movement, that follow simple set rep schemes and just focus on effort and progression are and always have been the backbone of my programming. So if I'm not focused on anything specifically, if I don't have a lot of direction or even a lot of free time, this is what I'll default to. And it's always super easy to run, gets me closer to the peak shape I need to be in, and then I can jump into a specialization phase depending on what I need. I can always come back to these types of programs when I've been doing specialization for too long, or if I've been racking up a lot of isolation work and I'm due for a break, as much as you can call this type of training a break. I would tell any of you strength guys not to be put off by the high reps. Improving these ranges is very useful. Some of you are going to experience immediate increases in max strength as you get through this, and others, even if you don't, it's still gonna represent more of a, a base volume hypertrophy type phase that you're going to benefit from long-term. So if you do it long enough to see growth, you can transition slowly to more strength-specific ranges, and congratulations, you've successfully completed a run of periodization. So that's all I've got for today on super squats. I actually think it's a good program for as kind of simplistic and bare bones as it is. It covers a lot of bases, again, a lot of bang for the buck, and the mix of density with the nature of the squat, with effort, and with the simple and continued progression, it's just a recipe for a really nasty amount of growth as long as you're eating. The book tells you to focus on sleep. It throws in the gallon of milk and all of the old school super bulk dietary methods. I don't think you need to do that, but as long as you are eating to grow, not to stay in your same damn weight class or a weight class lower. If you're eating to grow, you can benefit from this immensely. So let me know what you guys think. Leave your comments in the comments section. Thanks so much, guys. Until next time, this is Bromley. I'll see you.